Hello and welcome to today's video. So this time I'm going to be looking at my British Palatoy and American Kenner Land Speeders. Now this is a toy that was incredibly close to my heart. I had it right from 1978 when it was first released and I've always loved it to be honest. So that's what we're having a look at today. So sit back, relax and let's take a look. Okay then, so here is my original Palatoy Land Speeder and when I said at the start that I absolutely love this toy, that is not a joke. Um, I played the hell out of this one. <laughs> now I've got him in a lovely uh, GW acrylic case. I don't have it graded, but it is uh, it is at least encapsulated to uh, keep it as nice as possible because I, I do have um, my uh, Land Speeders on display. It is definitely one of my all-time favourite playsets. This one, I've always really loved it. Now, of course, the Palatoy one was a little bit different to the Kenner one because um, it had a solid bonnet. And the reason apparently behind that was that the smaller little accessories um, were just, it was more logical to produce them locally, apparently. So um, they didn't import any of the American um, versions. Uh, so, um, and there is also a Tolstoy version, which is like an Australian New Zealand one. And that's ever so slightly different again, but we had the solid bonnet. In America, they had a, a pop-up bonnet and, um, and also in Australia and New Zealand, theirs was a pop-up one, but all three are ever so slightly different. Um, but yeah, this is my uh, my British one. And yeah, as I said, really, really good. I love the pictures on the side. They are just the business. Obviously, of course, when this was being put together, there was just 12 in the range. And they do list all 12 individually there. Start your own collection of Star Wars mini action figures. Well, I already had. Um, so... When in 1978, when I was a lad, um, my birthday falls at the tail end of November, so I would generally have a couple of smaller presents in for my birthday and then my main present on Christmas Day. So, um, for my birthday that year, I had the Palatoy Land Speeder and I had the Palatoy Cantina and a few figures. They were my Star Wars sort of presents. I was buying the uh, the trading cards at the time anyway. I mean, that literally could have been me, maybe a year or two older, but that could have been, that could easily have been me there. Maybe I'll get says made under license from Kenner. So look, let's get this one out because I am dying to have a look. It's been a while since I've actually had it out the box. And it's certainly not a perfect example, but he's, he's not bad. Now I haven't got the instruction booklet for this one, but that's not too bad. I do vaguely remember it though. Um, so I'm sure that's the original in there looking at the age of the cardboard and some of the sellotape on it. And there we are. Now this one's actually been put in the um, parked position. So if we raise it up like that, that little mechanism, get it in picture, this little mechanism here, you see that? That was like the spring, that was to like make it glide, which really was quite incredible, wasn't it? And you could with the, the gear stick there you could pop it back and i don't want to break any mechanism here so i'm just going to gently pop it in like that and then it's just going to sit flat but that was how they were and um this one of the differences between this and the kenner one is that the uh the silver streak on the side here in the uk it's actually a sticker whereas in america it was something that was applied at the factory and it's an actual part basically and there's a couple of other little little variations on the seats but basically this this was how they were you know and very very there we are, very very nice nice car indeed now i did actually for fun i brought down some of my figures and i thought we could recreate recreate the box so i've got my little luke here and um I got the blonde hair guy, the blonde haired version. And I mean, I I do literally remember doing this when I was a kid. I would have the land speeder pretty much permanently assembled, I think. Um, you know, I'd have like a Tatooine display because I had the land speeder and I had the cantina and I had the land of the Jowers, um, uh, which um, I think someone else bought me. So, well, in actual fact, I don't want to bend Ben, he's so nice. I'm not going to bend him, put him into the land speeder. So he's just going to be sort of watching from the side there. <laughs> because he's such a nice one. I don't want to ruin his cape, really, you know, because these are my sort of best ones. And of course, 
R2 and 3PO would sit on the back, wouldn't they? R2 would just sort of ride on the back, um, as would uh, C3PO. And I, this is exactly how I played it. I mean, I really did. You see, like that, something like that. And of course, they'd rock into Moss Eisley, and the uh, stormtroopers would be there. And then would say, you know, what was his classic line? We don't need to see his identification. <laughs> <laughs> so this is it what a great great toy this was i mean i think the thing was this was the sort of toy that it was like an entry level one so i believe it was cheaper than the x-wing um it, in fact at the time it was probably the cheapest accessory you could get for star wars because what what else did we have with the last video the x-wing um land of the jowers the cantina set all of those are more expensive and then the big daddy of the collection was the uh was the death star wasn't it but yeah this was the the one and only solid bonnet land speeder that we had in the uk obviously there were variations around the world and there's the uh there's the french meccano one which is really really nice and there's an italian one uh, which was released by harbour um, and I would love to get some of the variants if, you know, if I had the room and the, uh, the, you know, to actually display them properly. I'd love to get, if there was any toy, um, any sort of accessory rather that I'd want to be like a focus on, I think it would be the land speeder because it is just such a great, great toy. Well, look, I'll pop these away and then we'll have a look at the American Canavan. So here's the US one. And I can't really remember where I got this. And I suspect it was from a toy fair in the 90s. Um, it's a pretty nice box um, and it's the first kind of release. They did re-release it in 1984 with a little flash in the corner, which was um, like the collector series. It was sort of, um, they re-released a few of their vehicles sort of five years after they started, sort of 83, 84, as like a little anniversary release. I've not, I've not got that one. And there is also a version of this one, which has got, which came with free R2-D2 and C-3PO figures as part of it, which is really cool, isn't it? Um, and pretty expensive, I would imagine. But the box is different. Obviously, this was produced in the States, so um, still got the uh, suspension action there. Different picture on the back there. This one though had the all-important opening bonnet where you could put your uh, weapons in. Would have been my the thing that I would have put with this one. There's an actual still from the movie. And there it mentions about the uh, the suspension there. Spring-loaded wheels to simulate a floating ride. Well, let's have a look. Yeah, he's not sealed this one. I don't think I've got any sealed toys actually. Maybe one or two. Uh, I've got some mini rigs that are sealed, but nothing big. Here we are, so it's got the inner again. And once again, no instructions by the look of it, so that's okay. I don't mind. Did it even come with them? I think it probably would have had something, wouldn't it? Right, so let's get the cardboard out of the way. So here we are. It just, it feels... A little dusty in actual fact. I don't think I've ever had this one out to clean because there is, I can sort of see some bits of dust and things like that. So it's the sort of thing I think I might need to uh, run the old toothbrush over. But you can see one of the big differences already, the silver streak on the side here, um, that's actually a bit of fitted plastic. And you can see inside there where it's actually been fitted in the factory as opposed to being applied um, by someone on a production run, you know, as a sticker. Still got the same suspension there, which is cool, like that. And then in the front, the all important, well, it's not a secret, is it? It's just a compartment, a, a little area, the engine bit there where you would, uh, I, if it was me, would have stored my, um, my vintage weapons, you know, to save them getting lost. I think it's just gorgeous. Um, to be honest, I prefer the British one, although it's not got the uh, the, the boot there, the bonnet. Um, I think the British one is possibly a favourite just for nostalgia reasons. Um, but it's still a fantastic, fantastic bit of kit. It's quite interesting that the pictures on both do uh, are very, very similar, um, except uh, Luke and um, Ben are in different seat positions. So, as I said, yeah, a few different variations of this one. Very, very minor ones, but three major ones. You know, this one, the one with the R2 and C-3PO figures, and then later on, the re-release from 1984. And let's not forget, Kenner did also produce the remote-controlled or sonic-controlled land speeder as well, which was another really, really cool one. But 
I absolutely love this one. I think it's probably, probably one of my all-time favourite original vintage Star Wars playsets. It really is quite, quite superb. So there they are. And don't they look absolutely fantastic? It really does bring Star Wars to life. And I think even kids today, if they'd have had these sorts of playsets, I think they'd still be able to get quite a lot of enjoyment out of these original Landspeeder toys. They're just superb, aren't they? Really, really good. I tell you what, looking at them like this now, I am sorely tempted to get um, one of the other more foreign releases. I think I'd like the one, the French language one. That would probably be if I could find that one. I know there was a Gure des Etoles one, which was released in Canada, I believe. Um, and then there's a French one, which has got a Meccano logo on. Either of those, I think, would be super cool as, as a particular one. I don't think it ever got released in Japan, at least not to my knowledge. Anyway, look, there we go. I hope you've enjoyed that little nostalgic look at the uh, the original Star Wars Vintage Land Speeder. If you have, do please give that video a thumbs up. If you've not already, do please subscribe to the channel for regular vintage Star Wars content. I've got quite a bit planned over the coming year and I try and do something at least every single month. So uh, do tune into that. And there's a whole catalogue of vintage Star Wars on the channel in the back catalogue. So do, uh, do have a look at that if you've got time. Thanks very much for watching today and I'll look forward to seeing you again very soon. Bye.